<laughs> kin- kinetic energy the opposite of that is potential energy so just not potent <laughs> then got it gravity and, and nuclear energy so yeah. okay it's like saurabh is roasting us yeah. <laughs> <I'm asking that laughs> hello everybody and welcome back to the berry benjas podcast this is episode 6 of an eight part series Make sure to check out our previous episodes. We've uh, we've done episodes on game design, game art, marketing, uh, game development, and now we move on to another aspect of uh, game development, which is uh, UI UX. So we have a little catchier title for today, which is the scenes behind the screens. So yeah, let, let's let's move on to our guests, both of whom I've worked with a lot since my job is like directly inter- interconnected with theirs. Uh, so first off, we have. Navita Alekhya Nemeli the lead UX designer for Parshisi Star and Ludo Star so Navya a little bit about you Hey guys so I've been working for GPL for a year now and I work as a lead UX designer um and the team focuses on making uh, board games Awesome awesome so um and our second guest is uh, Sharanya Unnikrishnan who is a UI UX designer for an upcoming game that we can't really reveal a lot about so Sharnya a little hey. bit about you Hi uh, so my name is Sharnya and I have been working in Gbel for the past 2 years and yeah I have tipped my hands in quite a few games here so yeah All right, yeah <coughs> I think it's like four games or something right awesome <laughs> cool so and also um This will be our first all female guest podcast so hashtag #women in gaming woohoo so yeah <laughs> okay. damn i should not have done that <laughs> that's, that's going to be left in now <laughs> yes <laughs> please okay. edit that out <laughs> don't edit that out <laughs> so um um all right let's get into the podcast then um so as avid listeners of our podcast would already know we always start off with the most basic of questions like what exactly is ui ux and what is your job in detail because i feel like a lot of people feel like they know what ui ux is i mean a lot of people wouldn't really understand it but um yeah like it's it'd be good to get some insight from you guys what exactly is ui ux so so um i'll start off with what the words are right so mm-hmm. ux is user experience and ui is user interface um so as as the word state itself are very pretty self explanatory like the user is at the center now what ux ui is is it, it's a process which solely focuses on um setting up a product a system a service right. that gives a great experience to your user right so um so that could be the the team working on interfaces team working on usability accessibility information hierarchy um everything that you put out mm-hmm. on the screen mm-hmm. is all uh, human centered right. uh, so yeah right. so basically you're making like a framework, simple like basically just make it the most basic of frameworks for a person to navigate through an app or wh- whatever it may be right okay shane you do you want to add on that Yeah so for me it's basically um, a process of designing a digital product based on or keeping in mind what or how the users should interact with it or how we can provide relevant and gratifying experiences for them by using the elements that we use in the product so that would be user experience design and when it comes to user interface design as so as navya said ui means user interface and uh, user interface design is generally a process where you dis- uh, design visuals to boost the ux of the product or uh, or make it better and easier for people to understand to navigate through and to you know differentiate between certain things that's where the visuals right. come into play and that's basically where all the colors the uh, you know styles all of these comes up right so like the most basic term it's like ui is just all the icons that you see on the screen ux is how those icons take you from one screen to another uh, yeah. in as simple a manner as possible something like that yeah right right right, right. awesome so like how is actually the team structure because i like from from what i seen i don't think there's actually a real 
um, like hierarchy that you have. It's just everyone's. It's pretty open, and uh, it just everyone works for each other in the team. Is that how it is? Uh, yeah. So at least in GBN, the way right. that we work is uh, we work in pod systems right. where um, we there's a UX designer, mm. have a game designer, analyst, uh, product. Uh, all of us come together uh, to work towards um, you know the final uh, spec or a feature that we call it or a game itself and then we do version. Um, so yeah, there's definitely not a strict hierarchy that we. Follow person. Um, so, yeah, that's about. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's precisely how. <clears throat> like, uh, I mean, so I, I work with Navita, so I know what she's talking about. So it's just like we have these pods, and like, like we have a lot of UI UX designers. But like, if there's a feature available, then if there's a UI UX person that's free, um, they join our pod, and then they'll be the one working on it. So it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah. So that that's, that's good. It's very open and free. So, sorry, Chanya, did you want to say something? No, uh, it's mostly fluid, like how Navya said, okay. uh, and mm. this actually helps us, you know, build that confidence and uh, also like quality in work. So that's a really good right. thing of having a flat hierarchy. Right, right, exactly, exactly. It's it's really nice to have that. Anyway, so um, also like I, since I've I work very closely with you guys, I like UI UX seems to have basically like you guys know a lot about player psychology as well because when it comes to game designing that's one of the major things major aspects to game designing understanding players and understanding users of how they would interact with stuff and what 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 will make them play the game more what will not make them play the game whatever it is so like you guys also have a very good understanding of like at least on a general basis of how people interact with games and of course there's a different kind of psychology that you'd be looking into but still there's like a little bit of crossover in our jobs as well. so what exactly do you guys do for research, and like how deep do you do you go into it? Uh, like, do you do similar things like what a game designer does, or are you looking at different things? Or like, how is it exactly? So, as a process, uh, when be it interviewing a user, hmm. be it observing their conversations on social platforms, hmm. uh, you know, um, be it uh, putting up a survey out there. Hmm. As a process, both of us are on the similar lines, mm -hmm. but what we take away could be different uh, in a way where a game designer is thinking of the, probably thinking of the mechanics of how the feature should be, what's working out there in terms of what what's bringing out the fun factor right. in uh, uh, our specific users, right. right? Now, when he's conceptualizing the mechanics of it, we uh, on the other side are looking at what are the motivation points for the specific user that we are working for. Right. Uh, especially if we are in like working in the casual games uh, genre per se, right? So we want to look into what motivates different age groups. What are their lifestyles like? What patterns are they following? Uh, what applications, what other applications they might be following, right? So all of this then, you know, becomes a repository of knowledge for us mm -hmm. when we work on the interfaces. So when we work, when whatever we put down on the interfaces would become like uh, picked up from the repository of, okay, these patterns work with a user. So if I have to translate something that a game designer, a mechanics that a game designer right. wants to put out there, right. how well can I do? Yeah, that's, that's pretty insightful. Sharna, did you have anything? Okay. No, it's mostly what Navya said. What Navya said, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that pretty much summed it up. That's, yeah. that's exactly, I mean, that, that's what I had an inkling about as well. So yeah. Um, but you guys also do play a lot of games exactly like a game designer does, except you're just looking into different things than, than what I'm looking into. So yeah, cool, cool. And uh, like when it comes to UI UX for, for games per se, um, like in, in games itself, we can split into like PC, console, mobile, uh, but let's say games in general. Like, how different is it, is it designing for UX, designing the UX uh, or UI for games as compared to like other commercial apps? Because it must be very different to cater to the needs of like that particular user base. Because some apps are like, I mean, it caters to the entire world. Like Facebook, um, if you design for like Facebook, it literally caters to the entire world. But if you're designing for like a Ludo game like ours, you're only targeting Ludo players, let's say. So, how, how different is it actually? Uh, I consider it to be a lot different because commercial mm. apps are built to make your lives easier. 
like it might uh, help you in achieving something to solve some problem in your day to day life uh, or let's say ordering food or anything it's to solve a particular problem like you can sit at home and get your food right mm-hmm. but when it comes to games it's not like it's solving anything it's not mm-hmm. giving you any it's not making it easier for you to you know spend a day like obviously in terms of fun yes it does but not in the you know in terms of uh, work or anything but most of these commercial applications has like simple goals to achieve and they are very uh, meaningful precisely if i put right. it right. but um, for games to have that you know power to stay in people's minds we have to think about a lot of different things uh including what kind of uh, you know small animation gives them a gratification what kind of gameplay makes them feel better like what um kind of rewards make them feel better all of this uh and it is difficult actually to make people stay into the game when compared to the other ones because um in game you have to make them stay the other ones they will anyway use so the right. principles right. remains the right. same but uh the design the way we tackle the problem changes changes all right so you wanted to add so i think in simple terms to sum up what charanya says is something could be a good ux in a general application okay. but may not necessarily be a fun ux yeah. right, right? right. Um, so that uh, player motivation is very important in whatever journey that they put in right. in right. game application right yeah because I, i was just thinking like even like if i just take like instagram <coughs> on the screen you do have a lot of buttons and there's a lot of different things to do but then in a game you'll find lesser uh, in, in in a lot of mobile games you find a lot of lesser buttons than compared to instagram but still people find it easy to use instagram but then they may f- still find it hard to hard to play the game like that doesn't make sense but i mean it's basically trying to figure that out that's also like p- part of your job i guess and i mean i i play games that involve like like 20 plus buttons being used at the same time so i'm i'm like just like so used to seeing a lot of buttons on the screen and Yeah, it's anyways, that's just a personal thing. <laughs> so, anyways, um No, that's uh, where the mechanics of the game comes in, right? Um, true, true. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they they like the mechanic like hmm. how Sharan is right for me please. They like the mechanics of yeah. the game, the user will go to the extent to learn your interface exactly. and interact with exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and for a Ludo game you can't be having 20 buttons on the screen cuz no one will want to no one will want to play <laughs> a game like that. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. So, I mean, if someone wants to get into the ui ux industry what would you recommend is the probably the best path for them to enter the industry um is it like through college or through just just kind of learning it themselves online what probably the best um so i like uh, until very recently hmm. uh, there weren't really any academic uh, right. you know structure to getting into uh, this um, uh, you know job profile right, right? uh but anyone who is you know solution oriented mm-hmm. uh who is inclined towards you know uh having empathy towards the user usually i like you know designers mm-hmm. and i also see artists coming into this field mm-hmm. um so you definitely have different options from the graduation level to masters mm-hmm. to maybe you've done your masters in some other design field you want to do a small course mm-hmm. that's also recommended mm-hmm. the end uh objective is that you get to know the process mm. you get to know the tools well mm. um and you know you get to know the research process well and what to like you know uh what to look for when you're like doing this uh, mm. job right mm. so as long as these objectives are met you could go dedicatedly do a course online you could go dedicatedly do a 3 year or 4 year graduation yeah. so i would say like have your focus and objective set first and then go for you know planning out your path mm-hmm. yeah i mean n- n- nowadays i mean in the past you never even had something like a game designing degree and now it's like everyone has a game designing <laughs> degree you were getting into the field and it's like so competitive and, but but actually these are things that you can just learn by yourself and just like through playing games like even ui works i, I know people who've done like 
the absurdest of degrees and and come into UI UX after that, like even game design. So it's just like you just have to have that passion and like knowledge of like player psychology and stuff like that to actually get into this. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean I would say um, it's not something that you could just say okay this job pays you well right. so let me right. just get into it and you know exactly. try to see if I can make it or not exactly. right. So, it's like you, you really have to have the passion for this. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, like, what would you, like, Sharnia, what would you probably say are, like, three most important skills for a UX designer? So, uh, for me, it is m- mainly collaboration, communication, and time management. To elaborate a bit on this, uh, I would say a person to grow as a team, right? Um, hmm. For a person to grow in a team uh, and hmm. be a part of it, they need to have excellent collaboration skills. Otherwise, what happens is, there will be one problem, multiple solutions, and they will not be able to look at it rationally and okay, this uh, the other person's solution might be right. That kind mm-hmm. of thought process might not come if they are not, they do not have that kind of a collaboration skill. That's right. And when it comes to communication, the reason why I mentioned it specifically is because uh, until and unless they have the ability to communicate with their team members and to mm-hmm. communicate with the users and understand what the users want, Until then, they will not be able to design anything properly. So for me, that was the most difficult part in my entire career. I had a huge dip and come back because I didn't know anything what my users wanted. But that's technically my job. I should be knowing what they want, but I didn't. So the whole dip actually taught me to, you know, okay, this is how people think. And this is how I should be communicating to my users and how I should be taking their, you know, feedbacks. So that mm-hmm. way, the communication thing is very important. Mm-hmm. And time manage- management, because um, a lot of our cultures, right, in most of the newer companies, uh, we don't have a set deadline as such. So it's good to have like your own deadline, like you make your own deadlines and you know, you keep up with it, you keep track of your work, otherwise you'll end up, you know, just doing something without having a proper flow or anything. Right. So that's right. why keeping a good track of your time keep and work yeah. is very necessary. Got it, got it. Basically all these points just resonate with me as well. Like, yeah. As a game designer, also, literally all these points apply. And uh, yeah, probably communication is the, the most key point and like being able to communicate like everything that I do I need to communicate to you guys you guys have to communicate to the artists and also communicate back to me so it's like yeah this this whole this whole cycle and yeah and understanding the users oh that's that's probably the biggest uh, I, I think even bigger than communication I feel because yes. if you don't understand your users yeah it's, nothing works out so yeah yeah uh, that's that's cool so um, also I was uh, I mean I I think users will want to know this where um, if, sorry, no, not users, but I mean, like the listeners of a podcast <laughs> who may, may want to know this where I was hoping like you could probably talk us through an example that um, in our game where we had a huge UX change or a huge UI change that actually mattered and like actually made a big difference to people of how they went, uh, like navigated through the app or like why was it done, what actually happened. Uh, so maybe like that could give a, like a clear image to a person as to exactly what UX is, like how UX actually impacts uh, a game or a, an app or whatever it is. Yeah, so I will take an example of Pachisi Ludo itself. So mm-hmm. we have events in the game, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, right. basically the same event uh, running on different days had different performances. And we, uh, mm-hmm. you know, had the data team dig into it a little bit more. And we figured out that this is basically because of the rewards that they were giving out, that we were giving out. And Mm. we made a very small difference in the whole uh, flow, which was Mm. uh, we actually showed them the reward first instead of the game, actually, the uh, event. Right, right. So that in itself. Maybe, sorry, one second. So for like for the listeners who probably don't know our game, um, so like when you enter a game, you'll see a pop-up of an event that's going on in the game. And usually the first pop-up that you see earlier used to be the actual game screen where you're playing the event. Mm-hmm. So what Sharanya means is that we started showing the reward screen where we're actually showing the rewards that you could win. And then you have to click on a button to actually start playing the game. 
So right. yeah, sorry, Sharon, go ahead. So uh, basically, once we change the flow, we saw a ten percent increase in people uh, like playing the events. We saw yeah. a very good improvement yeah. in the performance of events. Mm. So this is a very yeah, small, small change. Quite huge. Yeah. 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 But it yeah. made a huge impact. Exactly. Like that's how much UX can actually impact a game. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like a little tidbit for for our listeners. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's actually super insightful. Um, and th- this was uh, more of a personal thing where I just wanted to know exactly what happens. Uh, like so, when like a game designer is done with their part. Um, it, like their initial part, uh, when it comes to like designing, like a, getting a doc ready with the entire feature or the entire game, whatever, you'll have a doc that's sent to the UI UX team. What exactly goes on through your minds? Like I wonder, like how different is your thinking process as compared to mine? Like when I'm first given a problem to solve by my product manager, I'm like, I mean, this is what I need to think of. This is what I need to think of. So, w- what what happens to you guys? Like what goes on through your minds? So I think the first thing that usually we do uh, when we're collaborating with the game designers is to know the base objective of uh, why uh, they've come up with this certain uh, okay. mechanics, okay. right? Huh. And uh, the second thing that we also try to dig into is what is it that they have observed uh, yeah. patterns in the user that you know motivated them to say this will work out. Mm-hmm be it for uh, retention revenue whatever mm. uh, that we mm. pin on to right and then the second you you <laughs> we know that how it is that you know most of the time the reality is that we may not completely understand the mechanics mm. ourselves mm. like we are like why is it so complicated like how do we communicate it to the user that is the most important bit like right. where the ux designer and uh, the game designer are able to collaborate uh, in a way that um, they are able to come onto the same page right. uh, in terms of if it is a tough mechanics hmm. and if we think that it's not it's uh, the user cannot understand it then how do we make that easy for the user hmm. with the you know the wireframe that we put out there right? so yeah right. so on and forth so forth and once you like moved on with that hurdle and the rest of the process is similar to you know what we do okay, okay. the wireframe so like and flows and, flows and cool, cool. yeah okay yeah. <laughs> all right yeah and i think this is something that probably artists would uh, have in mind where how different is ui and art exactly like because in UI also technically you're making art assets for screens, um, but yeah, it's exactly how different is uh, the two. So uh, in our game specifically, uh, mostly once you get the wireframes from the UX people, we mm-hmm. actually do the color, we put up a mood board, basically how right. we want the visuals to be. and. Okay till the extent that we can do it like we will design the card styles we will design the icon styles and everything but once we are set with an idea it will move to the art team for beautification now beautification okay. involves all the banner arts and detailing on certain buttons maybe and detailing on um, entire screen also at times like you will see a lot of these screens have backgrounds Right. So these right. backgrounds come from the art team. So the right. work is always to and fro. But if I had to say uh, at a certain point it ends, I would say we, we design like till the uh, elements in the screen and the mm-hmm. art things like how I mentioned like banners and stuff right. that the more 3 d versions come from the art. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much like what I also do. But I, I just like... I just have to show like for example if I'm creating a level I just show like boxes and it's the art team that converts the box into like rocks or trees right. or whatever it is. Right. So they, they, they have that sort of understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, I get it, I get it. Cool. Alright, so yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that insight. Um, Alright, so that's pretty much the end of our podcast. So I mean now we move on to the super fun bit where I hope you guys can get all the questions right <laughs> this time. Um, <laughs> so for this time's quiz uh, it's going to be for games in general. Again, I've just talked to both of them and that like well, like we do now. So they wanted general gaming trivia. So 
Oh sorry, you said mobile gaming trivia, right? It's fine. I got mo- I just got general gaming trivia. <laughs> it's not super easy questions and Okay. You you guys should know this. So I I I ho- I have high hopes um for the first 5 on 5. So yeah, let's get into the questions. Right. So, <laughs> number 1. So this was the question that I mentioned to you Sharnia where uh, it was recently posted on Slack which is literally last night I hope you guys read the title at least then you'll know okay. the answer to this Okay um, <laughs> EA has recently renewed its partnership with uh, Middle Earth Enterprises which franchise game are they making uh, sorry, which franchise are they making a new mobile game on So option 1 Dark Souls option 2 The Witcher option 3 battlefield or option 4 lord of the rings i think lord of the rings yeah you guys can collaborate it's not navya <laughs> can i can <laughs> i make no, no idea no, no. <laughs> anyway okay then we can i Is think that what you're going with? Uh, we can go with you that you can lock guess. it in yeah i guess okay so yeah M- middle of the prizes is is known for like um, basically lord of the ring stuff so okay. yeah that's <laughs> a lot of things that's it it's like <laughs> the minute you said yeah i was like i know something about you <laughs> that's going on later i'll be able to answer it <laughs> so <good. laughs> okay okay so nice first question down number 2 okay oh god if you guys don't get this <laughs> i try to make this so easy which company you're building up the pressure <laughs> Like you don't get this. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. I, I won't say anything. I won't say. Anything. Okay. Okay. Which company are the creators of Angry Birds franchise? Supercell, Tencent, Rovio or Zynga? Rovio. Yeah. Are you sure? No idea. So I'm sure it's not Supercell. No, I I think it is Rovio. <laughs> Yeah. Let's go with okay. it, Navya. Yeah. yeah. You going with Rovio? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's not Zynga. It's not Tencent either. It's between Supercell and Rovio. They do have similar style of graphics and stuff like that. But yeah. <laughs> It's Rovio. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. 212, 212. Okay. Third question. What is the name of the motion sensing peripheral? uh for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One called so number 1 Kinect number 2 Potent number 3 Gravity number 4 Nuclear Gravity Gravity Yeah I think Is so. that what you're going with? Yeah So you think there's something called Xbox Gravity? Maybe <laughs> Yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would so just just rethink that answer rethink. a little bit. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so we have connect potent gravity or nuclear. Oh my god. <laughs> What about You never heard of any of these? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean I literally have an Xbox yeah. here but I have, I have no it. clue. Okay. <coughs> So I've given you a clue. It's not gravity. Okay. <laughs> just, Then, just pick out one of the other three. Okay. <laughs> connect. Okay. okay. I have no. Sorry, you're going to connect. Uh, Navya. Hmm. What are the choices again? Okay. Uh, connect, potent, okay. gravity, or nuclear. Connect, potent, gravity, nuclear. Connect. Can it be connect? Connect? Xbox Connect. Yeah, yeah. We'll go. Yeah, we'll connect. Connect, I guess. Yes. <laughs> my hand actually helped you guys. <laughs> 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 yes. That's correct. Oh my. So God. It's, it's it's not okay. it's not connect. It's connect like I, I, kinetic I, energy. I, I know, oh, I know, I know. Okay. So yeah. I I remember yeah. this, but I wasn't sure about this and the gravity one. Because I've heard this <laughs> from no, I've heard so, this from my brother, but I've never like kept it in my head. So, <laughs> well done. So, I mean, I, the, the other answers are just random physics stuff that I found <laughs> online. So, I'm like, okay, potential, like kin- kinetic energy. The opposite of that is potential energy. So, just not potent. <laughs> Got it. Gravity and and nuclear energy. So, 
Okay. It's like Saurabh is roasting us yeah. <laughs> for asking us questions. <laughs> hey, we should have one of those episodes where we roast people. Literally. Let's that would that. be nice. Let's do that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Episode yeah. number nine would be that. Yeah. The roast. The roast of the JBL crew. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> cool. All right. So yeah, three on three. I think this is the first time that's ever happened. So <laughs> number four. Which game did Zynga release on Facebook in 2009, reaching 10 million daily active users within six weeks? A. Farmville, uh, B. Eight Ball Pool, Three Mafia Wars, or D. Yovil? Farmville. I want to say Farmville, but I just feel will it become too obvious? Sort of, sort of would be like you know. I think it's uh, Farmville only. Yeah, Farmville. Farmville. Yeah. You sure? I think that? so. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not Mafia Wars and not Eight Ball Pool. I think those came a little later. Ha, I, uh, I don't think it was there in 2009. I'm pretty. It's between Yovel and Farmville. Farmville. It's Farmville. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I played the game. I told you this quiz is too easy. <laughs> I played the game. No, it Good is, job. It is easy, and that's why I was like, okay, is this the right time? I'm making you second guess yourself. Exactly. Yeah. No. I was, no, I was I, hoping I, that I would happen. No, I played the game. I played the game. That's probably the first oh, game. Ah, uh, uh, first or the second game that I played once I was in GBL. On Facebook, right? Uh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Four on four. Okay. The five on the, the five on five dream is still alive. So let's okay. go. Last question. Epic Games has recently started working with a company to help build a metaverse for kids. Which company is it? Toys R Us, Lego, Play-Doh, or Hasbro? Lego. Yeah. And I vaguely remember it. Lego. Yes, Lego. Yeah. Lego. Yeah, you're talking in Lego. So it's. Not Play-Doh. I think Play-Doh is just stupid. Why would they work with a clay company? Um, it's not Hasbro. It's not Hasbro. It's Toys R Us or Lego? Lego. Lego. It's Lego. <laughs> awesome. Fireworks! Fireworks! Boom! Explosion! Everything! Everything! All around! In post. You know what to do. <laughs> Awesome! Our first five yes. on five. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> awesome! Yes, awesome. Cool. So yeah, that's. This is actually the end of the podcast now. Uh, I don't know why I said it was the end before. Um, so anyways, we we usually end the podcast now with. Uh, we usually end the podcast with like the uh, the guests probably giving like some tips or like. Some sort of like advice for like budding UI UX designers coming up. So, so what would you want to say? Tell them, like maybe trying to join our company or join another company, whatever. Yeah. I'll say join our company, <laughs> join my team. Okay. <laughs> That's a little. <laughs> I mean, I mean give, give them a bit more advice. Yeah. <laughs> And right. subscribe to us. <laughs> Download our games. Play them more. <laughs> Give them actual advice. <laughs> no, no, just to join the company. See, so yeah. you did ask us to do that. Um, so on a serious note, um, I would say just work towards uh, the end goal that you want to achieve. Um, if it is uh, the gaming domain that you want to go into, um, I would suggest uh, having. passion for games helps mm-hmm. having uh, insight into you know um how games work always uh, you know it it helps mm-hmm. it's not just for like you know uh, coming into a gaming industry right mm-hmm. like as a ux ui designer if you your passion is to work for e-commerce let's say having an insight into that field mm-hmm. that genre works mm-hmm. so uh, it's do your preparation Before, like you know, you get into your feet. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Wise words. Wise words. Sharon, yeah. Do I have to say anything? Nothing? No. Okay. You don't have to. No. Yeah, you, you're also kind of new to this. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's why. That's why I, I I didn't want to say anything before I know anything. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I could say some, probably I wouldn't call it an advice. Hmm. I could probably point out a tip, okay. right? Yeah. So usually, uh, from what's expected out of a UX designer when you go into a team is that oh they'll know everything about the user and <laughs> empathy has to be the main core, right? right? So accepting that um, uh, you know empathy need not you may not always have mm. empathy for your user. You have to train yourself. Yeah. That. That's where research comes in. So accepting that uh, a UX field is not know it all at the first step. but you gradually learn with your user exactly. so uh, it's okay not to know something yes. but the willingness to like know is the key that willingness to know what your user wants and then molding your thought process your you know empathy and training yourself to empathize with your mm-hmm. user is like you know one tip i could say it, nice yeah nice deep stuff i like it so <laughs> awesome. yeah thank you for that navya so Yeah, maybe uh, like last time we had uh, Badri sign us off. So maybe Shania can do this this time. <laughs> okay. I, I, I didn't tell her about this, but yeah, please. <laughs> Go for it. What am I supposed to say? Like, Go share, and subscribe. <laughs> you heard it right here, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>